Hey, we're back. Stop loss with Spencer, episode 17, talking about that aggregate corridor again. Aggregate corridor 2.0. That's how you know it's not the same video I made a while ago, other than I've also got a sweater because it's season two, and I got a 2.0 there, so you know I'm not just rehashing the same old crap, okay? So what we're gonna talk about today is a little bit deeper dive into some strategies you can deploy around the aggregate corridor. Oh yeah, remember the laser again. Pew, pew. So that's how you know I actually plan for this one a little bit better. Okay, so aggregate corridor 2.0. Why are we talking about this again? Well, not a lot of people know that you can actually negotiate a reduced corridor. Ah, surprise, yeah. You don't have to stick with that 125% corridor anymore. That's right, you have some more arrows in your quiver. So as a quick refresher, the corridor, 125% on top of a million dollars of expected, adds $250,000 to your attachment point, you now have a 25% buffer, which is connotated, is it connotated? Which is notated, which is pointed out, which you can see, in red, okay? But what if you wanted to reduce that maximum liability just a smidgen further? Well, you can get 120% corridor, for example. Hey, heck, if you're feeling really frisky, maybe ask for 115%. Who knows, okay? But what? why would you do this? What is the point, okay? Well, for one, like I said, we're reducing our maximum liability. In this example, million dollars of expected, 1.25 million is the standard corridor. Well, guess what? You've now reduced your maximum liability by $50,000 with one single change, okay? Why else would we do this? It's actually really cheap, like pennies on the dollar. So for example, let's say I had a $5 PEPM aggregate premium rate. Well, to go from a 25% to a 20% corridor, it might bump up 25 cents PEPM. So it's super, super cheap which suggests that it doesn't dramatically increase the likelihood of an aggregate breach, okay? If we remember, 125% corridor on average gets breached about two, maybe 3% of the time, depending on the carrier. So that doesn't mean you're gonna double or triple the likelihood of an aggregate breach if you reduce it by 5%. So they don't charge you very much, they charge you concurrently based on the risk, okay? But one thing to remember is this has to actually be approved. You can't just go out every single time and be, give me that 120% corridor. They're gonna say, well, okay, now I've gotta do my risk assessment and determine do I have enough claims. I am being an underwriter, if you couldn't tell. They're not all like that. They're not all like that, but whatever. But so they're gonna go, well, you know what, Spence? I appreciate you asking for 120% corridor, but let me look at those claims, right? Do you have enough claims data, right? Is it clear enough what is going towards the specific portion and the aggregate portion? Is there not only enough claims backwards, but do I have the medical and RX clearly uh, delineated? There's a lot of reasons why they might say no, even if it's not that expensive, because they just don't have enough detail to make them feel comfortable in doing that. So you have to ask, okay? Ask them, will you do this? Will you consider it? And then be prepared to maybe give a little bit more detail, not only from claims perspective, but maybe the reasons why you wanna reduce corridor. They're probably not gonna do this on a fully insured group that's running at 120% uh, loss ratio with uh, you know really no insight into the large claims. There's not a distinguishment between medical and RX and you're just like, hey, I'm trying to do anything because I don't know what I'm doing they're probably not going to approve your 120% corridor in that instance, okay? And another piece that's related to this that I wanted to stress a little bit further that I didn't go into a whole lot on the last video is by default, usually you're going to get a million dollar ag max from the carved out stop loss carriers. So a lot of people go, well, crap, that concerns me because what if I go over my attachment point, they're only gonna pay up to a million dollars of aggregate premium. Well, again, if we remember that this is probably only gonna be breached 2% of the time, how likely do you think it's not only gonna be breached plus be breached by more than a million dollars, okay? Very, very, very unlikely to happen, especially in that small to mid-market size group range. I mean, granted, if you have a $50 million plan spend, then yes, it's possible to go a million dollars over the ag. But also, if you have a $50 million plan spend, you're probably not buying aggregate insurance anymore, okay? 
So should we be concerned about a million dollar Agmax? I would say if this only happens 2% of the time, breaching more than a million dollars might happen 0.02% of the time. It's just very, very unlikely, which is why they default to that ag max of a million and most people don't bat an eye. If you're really feeling concerned and maybe you're a slightly larger group and you're on the cusp of maybe you get a lower corridor and you've only got a million dollar ag max, ask for a two million, ask for a three million. The carrier might do it. Again, there's gonna be a fractional increase in the premium, but more than anything, it's just going to have to be approved and there's going to have to be a good cause to make that adjustment. So yes, the BUCAs often provide unlimited aggregate maximum, but that's really, I won't say it's snake oil, but it's really not that impactful versus a million dollar ag max. The likelihood of it happening is so, so small. And I know some brokers can go out there and go, Spencer, guess what? It happened to me and screw you. You don't know what you're talking about, but we can always bring up one single exception to the rule, and I will tell you that a million dollar ag max in the overwhelming majority of the cases is going to be sufficient, okay? So aggregate corridor 2.0, squash that buffer. Feel like an alligator, squash it. You have a little bit if you wanna reduce that maximum liability, and again, consider the strategy to potentially increase that ag max to two million if it helps you sleep at night. But really this is just one of those things as you start pulling different levers and get more comfortable with stop loss, that might be that next generation of negotiation strategies for you. So let me know, do you like it? Do you disagree? Have you never considered it before? And maybe you have some more questions. Let me know, I'm always here, I'm always available. Thanks for watching guys, see you next time.